Greetings subscribers and the curious persons. Welcome to another vlog on a topic chosen by the Goodreads Tuesday Talks group. And this week's topic is what were your favourite books or series of 2015? Well, I read 238 books last year according to the Goodreads algorithm and so picking my favourites would end up being a very long a video. So I whittled it down a bit. I started by ruling out all of the books that I was rereading rather than reading for the first time. I ruled out everything that I didn't give a five star rating on Goodreads to. And that still left a long list. So in the end, I've picked several books that I rated five stars and gave a review to. So let's start off with number one, The Muskowski Riddle by Darren Kennedy. And my thoughts were filled with the looming horror, comedy, hope, gritty images and soaring possibilities of its inspiration, Kennedy has created a novel that encompasses several genres without sacrificing the depth of any. Mirat Jaw makes her career as a psychic, finding people and objects when others can't. Compared to the harrowing images of a kidnapping case, the request to help a psychologist find the cause of a 13-year-old boy's semi-catatonia seems like the rest she needs. She quickly discovers Anthony Faircloth's psyche is shattered into pieces matching the movements of pictures at an exhibition. At first, the greatest danger seems to be failing to gain Anthony's trust, but the further Mira travels into the suite, the more she discovers the trauma that broke Anthony's mind might not be over, or targeting Anthony alone. And I recommended that to readers seeking either character-focused fantasy or an engaging psychological thriller. So I'll put the link to my full review and to the full reviews of all of the others I talk about in the comments section below. And number two on the list is Cityscapes, a paper plane pilot anthology uh, so that's a collection of poetry and my thoughts were revealing the immense power of individual perspective to turn even the most banal of experiences into a meaningful event and then adding the counterpoint that this makes each person responsible for their life being banal this collection suggests the real cityscape might be the spaces between the buildings vibrant emotive meaningful yet also fun the works make use of the human mind being both the first and the ultimate white space. The anthology contains 40 poems, prose scenes and short stories, along with 11 black and white photographs. And I recommended that to readers seeking a range of perspectives on Western urban living or just a pleasing piece of art. Number three uh, is the series The Book of Lost Doors by Misha Burnett. Now, the first book didn't come out in 2015. It came out in 2013. But the series did conclude last year, and it is one of my favourite series. So I've stuck it in because I think people should read it. And uh, when required to place this book in a genre, Burnett has previously chosen science fiction and urban fantasy. It might also be categorised as supernatural fiction or horror. The opening scenes have the ambience of crime noir and spy thriller. While the book is very definitely contains speculative elements, the story takes precedence over the speculation, refusing to be confined by genre. The protagonist, James Osric, has shared his body with an inhuman consciousness since early childhood, a consciousness he calls Cat Skinner. Cat Skinner gives him access to supernatural abilities, but also kills without apparent reason or compassion. James finds work as a contract assassin, 
but the murder of his boss reveals Cat Skinner is not the only unnatural being in the world, and not all of them are as content to merely exist. Before James can build himself a new future, he must try to understand his past. And um, I recommended that as a the fusion of engaging plot and complex world make it enjoyable both as a thrilling adventure and a metaphysical exploration. I recommend it to anyone who does not limit themselves to strict realism. And the rest of the series builds from there, revealing more of Burnett's interesting half Ballardian, half Lovecraftian metaphysical universe with a certain amount of Christian exegesis thrown in there. Next on the list, The Friendship of Mortals by Audrey Driscoll. Counterbalancing the hidden experiments and disdain for inconvenient laws of the mad scientist with a sympathetic search for solutions to human misery, Driscoll forces the reader to face the reasons for their horror. Is visceral attachment to the flesh of the dead truly more important than proving lives? If there isn't an afterlife, is resurrection ever too expensive? This novel is the first in a series reimagining H.P. Lovecraft's Herbert West Reanimator. A temporary appointment as custodian of the Necronomicon brings Charles Milbourne, a cataloger at Miskatonic University, into contact with Herbert West a medical student with progressive ideas about both the medical benefits of human dissection and death itself. A brief association that grows into collaboration as West's dark charisma draws Milburn deeper into the boundary between chemistry and mysticism. And I recommended this both to fans of Cthulhu Mythos and to those thinking more cerebral horror. And what I particularly enjoyed about this is that it's the same story fundamentally as Herbert West Reanimator by Lovecraft, but doesn't have the same gory pulpiness to it that makes Reanimator my least favourite of the major Lovecraftian stories. Next on the list, Lizard, Bird, Horse by August Smith, the second poetry uh, collection in my selection. Taking the worrying image that each expression of a concept is soul using imperfect flesh to form imperfect language for imperfect flesh to interpret for soul, Smith provides a solid example of why people who are at a party with your girlfriend might be having more fun than someone being trampled by horses and makes you smile while doing it. This collection contains 27 poems featuring one or more birds, lizards or horses. Hidden from the reader until they move beyond the title is the strong presence of parties and other group social interactions. I recommend it to readers who are in the mood for cheerful introspection or 32 pages that aren't blank. So obviously I was in a bit of a frivolous mood when I reviewed this, although uh, it is a quite interesting collection, so don't let my frivolity make you think that it's a shallow collection. And finally, In Memory, a tribute to Sir Terry Pratchett, an anthology containing stories on the subject of memory with proceeds going to charities beloved by Sir Terry. Drawing on the literary legacy of Sir Terry Pratchett without being constrained by it, this anthology is filled with memorable speculative fiction while avoiding any joke about the speculative fiction being memorable. Uh, it contains 17 stories in a variety of genres united by the concept of memory. I recommend it to readers seeking short speculative fiction with a lighter edge. So those are my picks from the greater list of books that I really enjoyed last year. 
So, toodaloo.